Hello, it is the 25th June 2014. This is the development vlog for the 19th of June 2014. Just been working late, so I'm hoping there will be another development vlog for today. This is actually the seventh development vlog, so yeah, let's just get down to it. We've had a, we've had a very good day developing Globebreaker, and yeah, it's been good. So let's just show you what I've been doing. So create a new file called brick definition. So this has just had some little definitions of the file path. It's just got some ID for the different bricks. These are just arbitrary numbers, it doesn't really matter what they are, because as long as I keep them consistent, hence why I've done definition and how many bricks in the X and the Y. As of now, um, in future brick breaker version or in um, Future Brick Breaker game, I mean Glow Breaker games. Uh, I think I might have said Brick Breaker when I said development vlog earlier. If I did, sorry, I meant Glow Breaker. But in the future Glow Breaker versions of games, there will be different size grids and even different size blocks. But for now, this it is a 10 by 10 grid. And what else do we pl implement it? Oh, we implemented the collision manager, which we mentioned before. It's very simple at the moment. It might be changed. So we got a has physics bodies colliding. It takes in a contact, physics contact, then the collision bit masks. And it just checks for it and returns true or false. So in the game scene or wherever it is, you just simply call collision manager dot has physics bodies collided during passing contact and then the two collision bit mass and it checks them uh, itself whether the first one is the wall or the second one is the wall and the first one is the ball and the, or the second one is the ball instead of you having to do those checks manually every time yourself this true isn't necessary i know that it's just it's just a habit of mine that's simply all it is and the other thing that I implemented was the brick manager so this is sort of the heart one of the hearts of the application and just let's get rid of this a second so you can see more of the screen so yeah we had the constructor it just takes the level number and I've now just implemented one level as a plist this is one thing that the original version lacked was um loading the file or loading the level from a file it was it's terrible how it was actually i literally just had a header file i think it was called something like level definitions and it was ridiculously huge there was just definitions of the level it, it was it was nasty it was horrible it got the job done it just wasn't the best and dynamic way and I've learned how to use P lists in there P lists since then my coding skills have advanced quite a lot. So where would we we was on the brick manager that's what we was on. So yeah we just load the file and then we just loop through it and get what is in that particular position. Actually I can remove this now. Good thing I noticed this. A CC log don't need it, need it for debugging, but it does work as far as I'm aware now. Then it stores it in a level array which we created here. Um, and then this draw method is called in the game scene at the end here. Most likely it will continue to be called that because it needs to draw it once when the game scene is initialized. Go back to Brick Manager, and then in here it just loops through the int array that we've got the, in two dimensional array and just checks what sort of bricks there are. By default, I just initialize it to, it doesn't matter what sort of brick, but I've just initialized it to a red brick simply because I need to get the size of the bricks. And at, like at the moment, they are all the same size, so I can just um, calculate the brick gap. But I've done it dynamically, so whether I do an Android device or on an iPhone or an iPad, there is an equal gap obviously on an iPad is slightly bigger compared to an iPhone because it's not as wide but it's consistent so that is the key and then it just checks what sort of brick it is where it's a red brick then that's the red single brick path what I like about using this herd hash define instead of actually using quotation marks and actually putting the path here one it's a little easy to read when it's going through the code I think also if you change the path for whatever reason you can just simply change it in one location where you know or that it is easy to find here or maybe it's somewhere else depending on what uh, it is and that is I think extremely useful. I think something that uh, you definitely should do when you crowd the application. Well, it's got the solid brick here. Yeah, we got the is brick 
present and if it is present then he sets the position and adds the child as well and he just uh, sets the, the position in the x-axis is correct the y-axis isn't correct at the moment because simply haven't had time to fully implement it and that's not going to be too much of an issue I don't see simply because got the bulk of it done and I'll actually run it so you can actually see what it looks like So if we click play, let's ignore that ball going off screen. So yeah, this is what it looks like. And um, let's load the P list again. All of you guys like 1001, uh, 1002. These are all bricks and then we've just got loads of red ones. And then here we got some solid bricks and we, I mean got some double bricks and we got a solid brick. And so it's actually visibly showing it now and it's just a little off the screen but that's just due to the anchor point and I will eventually position this up and I will eventually position this down. Um, let's go back to the brick manager. Yeah, that was it really for today. But it was a good day as every half an hour, hour or so I was seeing progress. Uh, it did seem like and it was progressing very nicely so it's looking good I uh, posted a screenshot it was it was of this but they were all read on an Android device for the first time uh, it's looking like what Glowbreaker was so the tasks for tomorrow or technically today is create a spreadsheet for level spreadsheet for level creation because in the old version we did have a spreadsheet which what we did was we'll sh I'll, show you I'll show you in the next development vlog once I've done the new one and it, it, what we have is like a 10 by 10 uh, grid spaces and you just specify what type of brick you want in there and that literally just creates the code and I can just copy and paste that and put it into my plist instead of trying to figure out okay I think this is this one I think this is this one whereas the spreadsheet allowed me to do that a lot easier and we use Google uh, Sheets for that and we're also going to be adding physics bodies for each brick so the ball can collide off it we're going to create the other level files as well so all the other 24 levels actually 10 to 25 simply because this isn't the proper uh, level and we're going to be deleting and removing bricks when the ball has collided with it we're also going to be moving the paddle by using touch we're going to be implementing the game windscreen or just like a basic version of it and we'll also show the game windscreen or we'll transition to it i should say once all the bricks have been destroyed so there's actually quite a lot going on for technically it is today now um, for the next development day let's say um, because it's going well still got that issue of when the ball is moving around and when it's colliding with other balls or other dynamic objects aka the only other dynamic object in the game will is going to be the balls it is losing momentum what i actually did find out is that it's not actually losing momentum it's more transferring momentum so what i mean by that is imagine if you have two balls i'm going to give you some arbitrary force values and one is moving with a force of 80 one is moving with a force of 20 so a total force of 100 when they collide the force before or the cumulative force is 100 when they collide and they bounce away, the cumulative force is still 100, but energy is transferred. So the one that travel that was traveling at 80 before might be traveling at 5 now, and the other one, by definition, is traveling at 95. And though that's how physics in real life works, that's not necessarily what we, that's not what we want for the game at all. Uh, and just because it works in real life like that, it doesn't mean it makes good game mechanics. And just simply doesn't. So if you do know of any ways to fix the issue that we're having simply but we're using the built-in physics in covers 2dx which is built on top of chipmunk i don't mind modifying the chipmunk library if you fix the issue or just modifying the physics library after the property that i can set to keep all moving objects aka okay, dynamic physics bodies at a consistent velocity or force or anything so they're consistently moving at the same speed unless we specify otherwise that would be great if you could help 
So yeah, that's it for this development blog. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystem.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube, wherever you feel comfortable with. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day.